Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Illuminati in Italy. Uh, tuning in from last time, we have unfortunately been nearly boxed in by the Papal State and her allies. The Papal State, as you can tell, is allied to Hungary, France, and Milan. Milan, of course, is one of our rivals to the north. They're allied to Aragon and the Papal State. Uh, and, of course, Savoy is allied to... Venice, but Venice only, not France anymore. That's actually very interesting. We, on the other hand, have allied Venice and Austria in the attempts to essentially stave off an attack from the Papal State. Because, let's be honest, that's all that's protecting us right now, is the fact that the Papal State doesn't want to try to contend with all of our allies. Uh, they do have a relatively small army at the moment. Unfortunately, their allies would almost certainly rise to the call to defend them in war. We have recently re-elected Cosimo de' Medici. Uh, he is now, unfortunately, quite the elder statesman, uh, which is not a problem for the time being. Uh, we'll just simply keep him around for as long as he's able to work in office uh, and learn benefit from his wisdom. Uh, remember, once he dies, we will be beholden to the skill of our rulers. So if they're more diplomatic, we'll play a more diplomatic game. If they're more administrative, we'll play a more internally focused game. Which, again, may be very frustrating for some people, but we're simply going to have to deal with that. That's part of the role play. Uh, and with all of that in mind, let me go ahead and start my timer here, or else I am incredibly bad at keeping time while playing this game. And we are off. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to begin figuring out ways to improve our position. One of the first ways we can do that, obviously, is by building marketplaces, building churches. We'll have to generate revenue somehow, for revenue will drive our war machine forward. Uh, one of the first marketplaces should obviously be contributing to the glory of our capital, Firenze, in the center of Tuscany. Mantua, another one of our rivals, seems to still be struggling with her pretender rebels. Interesting. How pathetic. One province minor, they can't even fight off their own pretender rebels. Our diplomat is reporting that things are going very well in Venice. Venice is quite a fan of ours now, which means that they should very soon be willing to uh, come to almost any war we desire, so long as it's not against one of their allies, which is very, very good. We're attempting to prove some relations with Hungary. We've sent a diplomat over there, partially to try and understand their reasoning for allying the Papal State over us when we've already allied Austria. We could have had a nice little three-part alliance here, but, Aust but Hungary, it seems, has made a hasty choice in allying them. But yes, we might consider allying Genoa. That's an interesting proposition. Ah, let's see. Border friction. Our rightful provinces are held by other nations, and our government seems to be making no effort to recover them. What use are they anyway, proclaims the broadsheet. Widespread dissatisfaction with our failure to recover our claimed provinces is sweeping the nation. Let's see. Perhaps a policy change is in order. We can lose 50 relations with Milan. Put a positive spin on things. We'll lose a lot of diplomatic power attempting to convince Milan that we don't actually claim their provinces, and unfortunately even more attempting to convince our own people that we don't need to take them, or we simply revoke the claim, which will certainly make us look embarrassed abroad and obviously lo lead to loss of the claim. Milan is a rival of ours. We don't much care for their opinion. Perhaps a policy change is in order. Policy change really is just lip service. We've always intended on invading Milan, but we simply can't admit to the people that we don't have the resources to commit to that war right now. They might question our power internally, which could lead to our weakness appearing externally. Now, we've accomplished our mission with Genoa. They like us, they're fans of us. Now, we just must think of a way to expand, which is truly the tricky part. Milan's allies are Aragon and the Papal State. If we were to declare war... Both would respond, unfortunately. Thinking through this, Milan and Hungary would both respond to defend the Papal State. Neither of my allies would come to war. Who else do I have claims on? Just Genoa. And I have a feeling that all of their allies would respond, except Mantua. But Mantua hardly matters. We should also fabricate a claim on Savoy. They already don't like us that much. We should fabricate a claim on Nice, get some coastal territory over there. This is a truly difficult situation we find ourselves in, and unfortunately, you know, stepping aside and going to the recording half of me, it means we're in for a very boring start to the series, I'm afraid. But oh well, we'll find a way to make this interesting, no doubt. Or at least I'm going to have to keep talking, in which case you're just going to have to keep listening to me talk. Now, let's take a look abroad for a moment while nothing much is going on here. Danzig has been released in the north. Poland has eaten half of the Teutonic Order. No surprise there. Muscovy, again, no surprise, eating Novgorod. Uh, to the south, the Ottomans, it appears, haven't actually done that much. Haven't done... A oh, but Byzantium has, in fact, fallen. They have crushed Byzantium and moved their capital to Constantinople. Unfortunately, not surprising. Let's see, to the south, Tunis, it appears, has begun eating their smaller neighbors, and Morocco and Tunis have split Tlemcen in half. 
uh, between themselves at least. The Mamluks have done a little bit of expansion down the coast. Iraq has formed with quite a few provinces. I've honestly never seen Iraq that big. Anyway, we scroll back over to Italy, where, as usual, uh, not much has happened, unfortunately, because we are stuck in an, I'm afraid, a cold war, and no one seems to be making a move. I'm waiting to see who makes the first move. We might be called in when Austria declares war on Milan over some of these Swiss provinces. Uh, you know, we might not be called in and simply take advantage of a smaller war. Uh, we can improve relations with Switzerland to try and get our approval up around the world. I think we shall do that. Meanwhile, we're going to keep finish, just finish off improving relations with Genoa, see how high we can make their opinion of us. I mean, uh, we have a very prestigious leader. We have done a very good job making sure that they're quite happy with our work thus far. So there's no point in not finishing that. We'll fabricate one more claim on Aragon itself. We want to make sure that that province, should the time come, can be ours. Ah, uh, we now have a war cabinet. Warfare is when the country is at its most vulnerable. The stresses of wars can seriously undermine the ability to rule. By ensuring that key players are involved during time of warfare, we can avoid these stresses. Yes, if we bring people like merchants, fishermen, guilds, nobility, and the clergy all together at one table, we might very well be able to circumvent many of the problems of war, leading to lower exhaustion among our people. Meanwhile, yes, Florence has long been the cultural capital of Tuscany. With the renewed interest in the classical world, a clever prince may attract new thinkers to benefit us all. Yes, Cosimo de' Medici was very instrumental in the rise of the Renaissance in Tuscany. What that means, that, or in Florence and then Tuscany. What that means for us, then, is that we get technology to much cheaper cost as scientists come to us. And with free thinkers and philosophers flocking to our gates, we can unlock new ideas about how to govern that might make things better for us in the long run. Switzerland seeks an alliance. I'm afraid that we can't actually accept that, which unfortunately means that we might not be able to get an alliance with them ever. Or at least not to complete that mission. Ah. Someone must move. Merchant effects. One of our use of mercantilist policies is proving frustrating for some of our merchants, causing some to defect to other countries. Either we believe that mercantilism is correct and we simply lose power temporarily, or we increase free trade, lose national spy defense, and lose mercantilism. That's simply unacceptable. Mercantilism is literally direct money into our pockets. Therefore, mercantilism it is. Plus, mercantilism is a permanent benefit. If we lose, uh, if we lose uh, trade power for a little while, it's no big problem. Now, if we take a look at the diplomatic, or rather, if we look, take a look at our opinion map mode, we have claims on almost every province we can reach. We're working on the last two right now, which is Napoli, the capital of Naples, which is a subject of Aragon, and Cagliari, which is the southern province of, uh, I believe that's actually Corsica? No, that's Corsica. This is Sardinia, that's it. As I said before, we cannot be so brazen as to attack Roma itself. Uh, not only would we anger all of the Catholic nations around us, it simply would be unfeasible to attempt to hold that much territory. Oh my goodness, do we keep Cosimo again? I think of course we try and keep him again. Unfortunately, I'm not sure quite how long he's destined to live. Savoy has made enemies of the Papal State, but they have themselves expanded. It appears we are the only ones that have not expanded in any significant way, except for perhaps Corsica. We'll have to find a path to expansion. Someone has to give. It can't be that peaceful. Mantua, it seems, has finally regained control of their territory. How incredibly pathetic of them. Who else has Austria aligned themselves with? Aragon. An alliance with Aragon might not actually go amiss right now. The problem is we'd be very, very likely to break it doing something. Ho-hum. Or we simply begin improving relations with France and hope for the best. Again, France, we'd be likely to break that alliance. Allying Burgundy might very well break our alliance with Austria. It's a very complicated situation. Let us finish fabricating our claim, improving relations with a few people, and seeing what we can do. We should send a diplomat to Mantua. Perhaps we can get them to back off their stance that we are an appropriate rival. We don't mean Mantua any harm, yet. So there's no real reason for them to despise us. How many soldiers do those around us have? First person we're going to check is Milan. Luckily, due to our advanced spy network, we have access to a ledger that it keeps up-to-date counts of how many soldiers they have. Milan has 14,000 soldiers. Quite sizable, same size as ours. The Papal State. Listed under T. 
20,000 soldiers, of which only five are in their proper territory, which tells me that 15 must be stranded over here in Avignon. If we declared war on them, it's unlikely that Savoy would give them access, as they are rivals of Savoy. Hmm. Interesting. Venice, on the other hand, has 25,000. Aragon has 24,000. Austria has 41,000. It's an unfavorable vantage point from which we start. Now, let's think about ways to improve our situation. But we should also continue building buildings. If nothing else, we can increase our wealth while we ponder the situation further. Disputes affecting governments. Republics are successful when important families are ready to put the republic's interest on par with their own. Currently, our republican traditions are under pressure, and families are putting their own interests ahead of the republics. This is hurting our ability to govern, as consensus is harder to achieve. This is, in fact, bad. Luckily, that just means a loss of power among the bureaucrats. We, the Illuminati, still retain firm control of the government. While that is unfortunate for mid-level decision-making, the kingdom shall, or rather the republic, let's not get ahead of ourselves, shall go on as before. All right, we've almost concluded our mission to Switzerland. Our mission to Mantua is well underway. Our diplomat there is not exactly optimistic about how well he can raise their opinion of us, but he is willing to try, and that's all one can really ask of these new men. Their only, Savoy's only ally is Venice. If we were to declare war on them, I think it might be the right decision to try and ally. Oh, wait. Has Genoa gone to war? I'm trying to figure out quite what's happening. They're shuffling all their forces around. If they are, in fact, going to war, it may be worth our time to wait and see what happens. We shouldn't ally them quite yet, because if they go to war and they leave behind only a paltry force, it might be a more savvy tactic to simply sweep in behind them once their allies are exhausted and take what territory they have. I was wondering who would fa make the first move. It was going to be either the Papal State or... Oh, we don't care much. But, Worship of the Virgin Mary. The Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the Queen of Heaven and Mediator of many graces. There is no more perfect woman, and her holy motherhood grants her a seat at the right hand of God. Or does it? Radical... Recently, radical theologians have been arguing that there is no need for such intercessions. Are they right, or is the Holy Mother Church in danger from their almost heretical utterings? We may either pray that the Madonna forgive them, which will gain us a small amount of influence with the Pope, which, again, shall be negligible since he already disapproves of our many secular activities. However, it shall make many of the peasants disagree with the teachings of the Church and anger them, and perhaps seek some way to reform the Church. Or we can simply anger the Papal State. Well, we th I think we know what we're going to pick. We don't much care for the secular opinion of the Papal State. Our souls are checked with God. If the Papal State wishes to be angry with us, then they may do so, but they will have to do so on a secular level, for we don't much care beyond that. I know, it seems so fickle and evil of us, but what are you going to do? We are a secret society, after all. Now, more buildings have been constructed, more buildings are ready. Would it be worth our time to build a fortress anywhere else? Not quite. Ah, oh, our next general has died. Fortunately, it seems we're going through these men quite quickly. Now, normally we would just make our leaders, our, rather, our Republican leaders, commanders of our military as well, but simply put, Cosimo is too valuable to the Republic. Oof. We'll have to simply replace our incompetent diplomats. The penalties for not doing so. Simply noble blood is not going to be enough. The world is changing quite rapidly, and our nobles will have to learn to keep up or fall behind, and simply be replaced. Where is Genoa going with those fleets? Genoa is transporting a large amount of soldiers overseas. Where exactly, I don't quite know, but they seem to be preparing for something rather large to happen overseas. I really truly hope that whatever it is happens soon. And happens in a large enough way that we could perhaps sneak in and do some damage. Other things I'm hoping happen is that Castile and Aragon finally come to blows, or France and Aragon finally come to blows, and something goes awry north of there. Unfortunately, the unfortunate passing of Cosimo forces us to hold a premature election. Three primary candidates have been nominated. Either Filippo Grimaldi, he's a strong claim to become ruler, and he is a bureaucrat, very well established within our government, has handled many of the internal affairs of state. Our next candidate is Giancarlo de Moro. 
He's a diplomat. He's served abroad many, many times. He has helped he has helped our three diplomats with their missions abroad for the glory of Florence. And lastly, our military candidate, Innocenzo Sodorini. While not leading our armies in the field, he has done a great deal to plan our overall military strategy at home. Due to our current ambitions and our current dead gridlock among our nearby neighbors, it may be most prudent to have a diplomat. We don't have very much improvement that can be done with the existing science and knowledge available to us, and our military candidate would simply be wasted. Giancarlo Del Moro, we have rigged the election in your favor. Do not disappoint us. Now, we can name Giancarlo our leader. It's not terrible. Not great. Not terrible. Now, it seems Austria has declared war on Switzerland, which was unfortunately the wrong choice. I would have much rather them declare war on Milan to take that land. But it doesn't seem that's going to happen. Milan has unfortunately cored all of that territory as well. Ah, yes. Our diplomats now have gone to a school to learn how to better improve relations with our neighbors, and therefore will be much more, eh, let's say, equipped to make those around us more favorable towards our positions. Tunis, it seems, has expanded once again. They're quite large now, and they're allied to Morocco and the Ottomans, so they're quite safe and will likely be pushing against the Mamluks soon. However, the Ottomans seem to be losing ground against the Mamluks. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Hungary would be willing to take an alliance. We shall extend an offer of an alliance to Hungary. There. If we can't at least break any of the alliances, we shall deepen them so that it becomes more complicated for anyone to declare war on us. Something will eventually have to break. Now, we should begin plat plotting our overall strategy since we're sitting here doing not much else productive. Ah, yes, more things that we can build. Excellent. Pass the Heretico de Cumborendo Act. Make it an illegal offense punishable by burning at the stake to either own or produce a translation of the Holy Bible. Now, this might cause some reform desire, but it will give us national tax and missionary strength. This is actually a very good thing. We want to make sure that the Catholic Church stays as unadulterated as humanly possible. Therefore, we're going to pass this, regardless of the upsetting effect it might have on some of our people. We'll send it to back to Switzerland. Unfortunately, I fear they may not be very long for this world. Now, plotting our overall strategy. Obviously, one of our first tactics will be to attempt to break out of this deadlock. That will have to involve either going through Genoa and taking some of their territory when their allies abandon them, going through Milan and taking some of their territory when their allies abandon them, or likewise with the Papal State. Unfortunately, none of those options seem very strong at the moment. I'm afraid we might fail this mission with Switzerland in a moment because they are about, unfortunately, to stop existing. Brandenburg has been summoned with unlawful territory. Uh, we'll maintain our diplomat there. We have no further use for him at the moment anyway. What did they return? It appears they might have returned Griefswald. So many petty wars over such pathetic territory in the north. It's truly upsetting. Now, we have to try and find another avenue for expansion somewhere. Somehow, we'll have to try. Well, we must certainly try and save our own people. That's for one thing. Now, we must also begin building barracks. That way, we'll have a larger standing army. Workshops as well might be very profitable. Now, normally this type of internal work is not exactly the bailiwick of our current leader, but unfortunately, it's the best we can do under the circumstances. There's not much diplomacy to be done. Ah, interesting. Austria only took one province. What are they planning? A new coin. In times past, the Gonfalonieri used to be on the reverse side of coins. Now, the re re Republic rejects such personality cults. If we were to issue a new high-purity high coin, we could improve people's faith in the coinage. And of course, all should remember who did this. We can either reject the reform and gain inflation, or let the coins be issued and lose Republican tradition. Well, the reform is a very wise tactic. Unfortunately, this leader is but a stepping stone. We all know that Giancarlo is not long for the legacy of the Illuminati or Italia as a whole. Unfortunately, we may have to let the coins be issued. We'll remember him as a stepping stone, but we must be sure to... Remind the people that he was that and no more. Switzerland has no allies. They'd be a prime target for someone like Ravensburg to attack, but I highly doubt Ravensburg will be so bold as to make a move on their capital. 
Interesting. The Separatists have done quite a number on Austria's military, or at least that half of it. Aha! Despite their recent war, Switzerland has decided that our diplomats are well worth the wait. Let us go around and begin improving relations with a variety of people, shall we? We'll just simply improve relations with everyone we can get our hands on, including, as much as it breaks our heart, Aragon. We need to make sure that we're not in a position where anyone can easily attack us. I'm still curious where all of Genoa's military has gone. Ah, has it been perhaps to attack the Separatists? Trebizondi Separatists. I didn't realize that Trebizond had a claim there. Interesting. Very interesting. Once these three buildings finish, we'll attempt to build some more, try and get some more revenue flowing in, provided that it's worth our time and money. But for now, we're going to continue these diplomatic operations. Right now, the primary goal is to ensure that our allies will be ready to come to war should the time comes, and our enemies shall be staved off from coming to war because their allies shall be hesitant to attempt to declare war on us. We need our abroad reputation to look so pristine that we find a way around dying. Yes, we are indeed attempting to cheat death. However, that's enough for me today. This is the end of my recording session for today, so I'll be uploading these three videos uh, you'll, again. Uh, for those of you who didn't tune in last week, you'll be getting one a week, uh, and I will be trying to stagger them and so that I have time in between to kind of read your comments, get a feel for what you guys think of the videos. Uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in. As always, I've been your host, Zoolander. I will see you all next time.